Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it's time for another top five. And this top five is dedicated to a Patreon supporter, Robocop, I believe is your name, asked for a top five list of the IDE applications you can use to develop C++ in Linux. So first and foremost, I have not touched C++ in 20 years. I actually did the math. Freaky. I'm that old. I'm getting old. I studied C++ in college 20 years ago. I haven't used it since. Um, so if there may very well be better applications, but from things that I have researched, a few lists I've had, and uh, just tinkering around a little bit on a virtual box, um, I do have a top five list of IDE applications um, that you can use for doing C++ specifically. Now, I use some of these for web design stuff, and I was introduced to some more of these in my research that I will use. Um, but regardless, we are going to have a look at this, and this is again dedicated to a Patreon supporter. So we are going to look at the top five IDE programming packages for doing C++ programming in Linux. Once again, I'm not a C++ programmer, so if there is a better one, if you are a C++ programmer in Linux, please leave your favorite applications down there below for anyone else watching this video later to have some better tips. Uh, usually I do these top fives from my personal experience. Every now and again I do them from research based upon supporters. Once again, uh, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. Anybody that asks questions over there on Patreon who is a supporter, I will definitely be looking into your video ideas. So. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, boot these up into a virtual box and uh, and I did the virtual box just so I don't have to add an a, you know experiment with a, a lot of things on a system so uh, that's kind of what we're doing so let's go ahead and jump on into these So number five, gedit or Cade or any basic text editor on your Linux machine. Uh, the text editors on a Linux machines gen generally tend to be a little bit more uh, robust than the basic text editors that you will find on a Windows or possibly a Mac. I haven't used the text editors on the Mac quite as much. Um, but on a Windows machine where you have Notepad and WordPad, these both have different, slightly different functionalities. But on a Linux machine, the built-in text editors um, are are generally okay. And so I have installed here on Linux Mint, I have on the top, I have the basic text app built into Linux Mint. Um, and then this bottom one is um, gedit. Of course, on KDE, you would have Kate. And there's a few other ones like this. Uh, now, these guys here can be used for code hinting and, and things like that. The biggest thing is that what you want to do is you want to show what the, um, the type of document happens to be. And so what you want to do for doing that is select the type of highlight mode that you want to do. And so now you'll be basically be able to see how the, the coding looks. And of course, you can do the same thing with... Um, with the basic uh, text editor here in um, Linux Mint as well. You just got to find them. Okay, so there's how you can do that. Of course, I think there are a few more uh, edits, uh, a few more options for your your look and your appearance. Uh, but these basic editors are, you know, are are very handy. Now the thing is, though, is there's there's really no code completion in any of these. Um, so you'll see that you're typed correctly by the change in the coloration, but you don't actually get any of the, the code hinting. Number four. This one is recommended by uh, several different people that, that want a little bit more code completion without a lot of the other complexities, and that is Sublime Text. So Sublime Text, um, this one I believe you also need to install this one via a PPA. You might have to install some of these via PPA depending on your distro. Uh, this one here you'll see is just a very basic, uh, a very basic setup. There are though a lot of different uh, view options. So you can pick your font sizes, you can pick your coloring schemes. Um, and then of course you can pick the, the type of project that it is. I believe it's under view somewhere. 
There we go, pick your syntax. So I've already pre-selected my syntax to C++. But the other thing that this one has is it does have a little bit of code completion that you have. So this one merges the, the code completion and a few other functionalities of your more advanced editors with some code completion, some more customizability. So if you're spending your day in front of a lot of this, but you already, you don't need all the tools. Maybe you just like to compile things you know, kind of in, in the, the terminal line, this might be the application you want to do. So this is Sublime Text. Number three is Atom. So Atom is a uh, another one of your basic text editors, but a lot of the reasons a lot of people really like this is it actually has built-in connectivity and functionality with GitHub. So if you are pulling and pushing Git scripts and that's where you're doing your editing, you might want to move towards Atom. This is the built-in text editor on a few distros. Um, I know uh, I looked at... Um, um, uh, uh, I forget which Gen, Gen 2. I just looked at a Gen 2 distro recently that had Atom as its default text editor. This might be a little overkill for some people, particularly if you're just doing small things. But if you are doing things on GitHub um, and you want to have the ability to to push and pull from and to GitHub, then Atom is probably the one you want to do. I did have to install Atom with a PPA. It's pretty easy. Just look up their page. They'll tell you which PPAs and, and how to install it. So Atom itself, again, it, it is probably overkill for some basics. Here's my basic text editor part. Let me just post some stuff in here. And then uh, we should be able to, to do some, some code selecting as well. I gotta remember where it is in this one. You'll see that there is a lot of uh, a lot of items in here specifically for GitHub work. Uh, I apologize, I don't remember exactly where everything else happens to be, your colorations and whatever else. Uh, but this is one that is recommended by by several different people. Uh, so look into Atom as your number three. Number two is Bluefish Editor. This is the one that I personally use for my web design stuff because it has everything. Really the only thing that, like, th there's a few differences between my number one and my number two pick. Um, my number one pick for this list has a compiler in it. And I don't think Bluefish does. But here is Bluefish Editor. Uh, I really like Bluefish because the it has a much more robust... Um, uh, code completion. So if I do, if I'm doing a uh, anything dealing with code completions, uh, then it will actually automatically autofill my parentheses, things like that. So that's one of the things I really like about this is if you're coding something from the ground up, it works great. In web design, it is a little annoying when I'm just doing small adjustments, but that's okay. The other thing that I like is. Um, if you're selecting something uh, that has like parentheses or whatever, it will actually select all of the parentheses in that group. And that actually really helps you find uh, the beginnings and the ends, especially for a long code. In my case, for a long website, this is critical for me to see where the start and where the ending div happens to be, stuff like that. Um, there are some options. Uh, we can come into our uh, language mode to select what type of language we have, and this will give us the color coding based on that. And inside of your uh, preferences, I'm sorry, which is under the edit menu, not the file menu, you can adjust your fonts, your colors, uh, your auto completion preferences, things like this. So there are a lot of things. The Bluefish editor would be one of the one of the better, more robust ones. I personally use this, and what I like about it is I can open up. Um, I can actually set this to open up files on an FTP directory, which is important for me as a developer for website site stuff. But I can also just do it on a local folder, open up all the tabs down here, and I can have multiple documents open at the same time. That is a functionality that is absolutely critical for my work, um, and it may or may not be critical for you if you are doing some programming. So before we get into our number one pick, I want to say thanks for stopping by this video. You can help support Switch to Linux by checking out switchtolinux.com forward slash support to learn all the ways you can currently help support us. We also have a shop with some things uh, such as t-shirts, coffee cups, and this mouse pad uh, available at shop.switchtolinux.com that will forward you to Spreadshirt. And uh, that is a great place that you can uh, get some things for yourself and help support this channel. So now without further ado, our number one genie. 
I think that the number one pick being Genie, a lot of people really like this. Um, uh, really like this one over several of your other, uh, over several of your other different applications. The thing that I really like this and what set it apart for me is the fact that this has a built-in compiler. So you can come up here and there is a build menu. Here's your build, compiles, your executes, and then we have the status, we have our compiler, any messages we have down at the bottom. Um, it will do uh, It will do some uh, code hinting. Uh, you can turn some of that off. Um, it doesn't do the hinting quite as well as I like Bluefish. So if you're learning coding, uh, or you really want your, your hinting on, then uh, Bluefish is probably a little bit better. This does have some code hinting to it. Uh, it's just I don't find it quite as robust. But the fact that it has a compiler built directly into the GUI and you can actually come down and set your build commands specifically, this makes this the best ideal uh, C++ compiler or um, IDE application that I have seen. Of course, you can just like the other ones, uh, you can actually get in here and uh, choose what type of document you're, uh, you're picking. So file types, C++ source, there's a variety of other things in here. Um, you know, like I would use HTML or PHP or, um, or um, uh, Cascade style sheets, things like that. Um, so uh, there also is the edit, the preferences. One of the things though that is a little bit better about this one uh, with your um, uh, completions is you can actually auto close. Those things that I did kind of like about uh, Bluefish, you can turn those on or turn those off. So there are, you can more fine tune your auto completes in Genie over Bluefish. Uh, what I don't know is it, I don't really see, other than just having the ability to uh, see the start and the end by the line code, I don't quite see the coloration on the side itself when I select an individual group. So uh, that is some of the things. There is no perfect one of these. It kind of depends upon what you're looking for. But these uh, five picks hopefully will lead you in some good, better directions to figure out which IDE application might be the best for you. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.